this video goes along with chapter 19 of this book and in this video I'm gonna analyze a gantry and calculate it first by hand and then compare the results to SOLIDWORKS simulation I've got the dimensions of the gantry over here it's a gantry with a width of 5 meter and a height of 10 meter and there's a distributed load Q of 10 newton per millimeter so when I'm gonna analyze this uh, by hand normally it's more convenient to use symmetry but this is uh, one of the few exceptions so normally if it's possible you should always use symmetry it will save you some calculation time especially if you're doing it by hand on pen and paper but in this case I can analyze this gantry just by taking the calculation of the upper beam uh, if I'm interested in the deflection of this horizontally orient orientated beam so the deflection over here at the middle point uh, is the deflection here at the side point plus the deflection of this horizontal beam but the deflection at the side point according to static rules uh, can be neglected this beam will only move a little bit in this direction and since it moves in this direction and not in this direction I can neglect the movement of this point for static uh, analysis so then I can calculate this beam the deflection of the upper beam just by using the, the equation for one horizontal beam under a distributed load and I've got these equations on this page over here you, you can see the equations you can find them on the internet easily or if you have a statics book you will find it in there as well and when you fill in the numbers the Q is 10 Newton per millimeter so when you're calculating a millimeter always be sure to use millimeter for every uh, every value here in this equation uh, the length of this beam is now 5 meter and then E value is the E value of steel and the I value I can uh, calculate or I can find it in tables when I'm using a HE 100A beam as I'm using in this calculation or I can find it in SOLIDWORKS as well I'll show that later on so here you see the results analytically and with help of FEM they only uh, change, they're only differing for one millimeter so the results are given in millimeters over here and then the analytical result is a little bit uh, further from the truth than the FEM result because FEM takes shear into account I've discussed that in chapter 16 of this book as well so check that video if you're interested in why the shear is not taken into account with a, a manual calculation and it is taken into account with a, a FEM analysis so I'm going to switch over to SOLIDWORKS now and do the calculation of this gantry and I'll draw on this surface I'll draw the gantry like that and then enter the dimensions this one was 5 meter so 5 m does a trick this one is 10 meter and then this point should be horizontal compared to this point so then I've uh, got my gantry drawn I can then use weldments to generate a HE 100A beam over there see if the orientation is correct and by the looks of it it isn't so I'm gonna rotate it over 90 degrees and then uh, let me see there was a wrong the wrong bar I'm gonna rotate it here over 90 degrees and then the orientation is correct I can then also uh, change the way these beams are cut relative to each other I'm gonna use this uh, this uh, corner treatment over here and then using this profile as mentioned before I can request the I value that I can use in the analytical formulas so I'll just use tools and then section properties and here I see the I value of this beam is relative to the I Y axis over here so this is the I value the surface moment of inertia of this beam that I should use in that formula if I then fill out the numbers I will get a, a deflection of 111 millimeters uh, analytically and with software simulation I'll get a 112 if I'm doing everything correct so I'm gonna do a simulation and then enter my fixture so I'm gonna 
fix this point and just use fix immovable so it can still rotate if you use this one it cannot rotate so in this case we we were uh, having the the problem of this point being able to rotate this point as well but not to to translate this point and this point shouldn't be translating in the z direction so then i'm gonna use reference geometry for the other two points as well i don't want this point and this point and this point to move in a direction perpendicular to this surface so by using this button I've set that up and if I want to see that I can enlarge the symbol settings so I can see green arrows that show in which direction these points should not move and then I'm gonna need a last fixture a fixed geometry fixed geometry of this point in this direction you can use a line or a surface I don't want it to translate in this direction and I see the green arrow appearing again to sh indicate that it, it can move in that direction so now I've got my system set up I can enter a load on the upper beam divided over the beam I can enter the load per unit length and then I want let me see if this is correct uh, it's easier to choose a line so you know there's only one way this force can move and it's at 10 newton per millimeter so that should be then 10,000 newton per meter it's going in the right direction so no need to reverse it in this case and now if I run this study I should find the result that I've uh, presented in the table before so I'll run it here I see now the stress and what I want to see is a displacement plot in the z-direction and then I find indeed uh, the maximum value of 112 millimeter of deflection as I've uh, shown in the table beforehand already so in this case the, the analysis of a, a gantry can be done with standard equations and you can check it quite conveniently and easily with SOLIDWORKS so that was it for this video, thanks for watching.